In this video, we're going to do a longer version of the classic side part. Before I begin, I'd like to show you um, a few things that we have to look out for on this particular haircut. There's a little bit of recession in both corners, so we have to make sure that when we're cutting the top, we allow for the slight recession so that we don't uh, leave uh, a hole or short pieces in the, uh, in the corners. Also, this particular hair, it's uh, thick and it's very straight, so if we get it too short, it's going to stand straight out, so we need to leave it long enough so it has the weight to lay down. And you can see like now, it almost wants to jump out a little bit. And as we, uh, as we spin them around, um, he has some very interesting calyx in the back here. His calyx are very high up on his, up, up on his, above the round of the head. So we're going to have to be very careful when we cut the top that we don't get these pieces too short. So we want to make sure that we're layering the top at an up angle like this to leave these pieces of hair longer. And the same thing as we're cutting the back, we have to make sure that we have uh, this particular angle to leave more hair here. And then as we get in through this area here, right on the round of the head or the occipital bone, we want to make sure that we uh, leave some length, but we thin it out enough so from the side it doesn't look like it's bulging out. And then as we work on the bottom hairline, it kind of grows all to the center and to a point. So without cutting it too short, we want to kind of bevel it out and taper it out a little bit so as it grows in uh, for three or four weeks, it looks natural instead of coming directly to that point. So. Um, those are the things, especially with thick, thick, straight hair, you have to look out for. And it's extremely important, which we've already done, is we've uh, freshly shampooed and conditioned the hair so you can see every growth pattern. If customer comes in with gel and, and, um, or any type of product in their hair, you might miss something. And then when you go through and you thin it out and shampoo it afterwards, it's going to stick straight up. So uh, those are a couple um, quick tips before we begin. We're going to start out on the top section. Uh, the best way to, um, to work on these haircuts is you want to make sure you work from the top down because what happens is when you work from the bottom up, you haven't cut the top yet and you really can't find a guide that you're blending to. So the other thing that I want you to focus on when you're doing these classic side part haircuts is the square shape. So when I say a square shape, you want to make sure that when you're picking up the hair that you're picking it up uh, parallel to the floor. So by doing that, if you, you need to remember that the head is round, so you need to have more weight in the quarters. The hair needs to be longer in the corners, longer in the front, and longer in the crown so it lays down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush it straight back and find my natural part. Then I'm going to part it where the natural part is. And then I'm going to comb it forward so it's easier to pick up. I'm going to pull the bangs up at 90 degrees. What I don't like to do is comb the bang straight down and cut across because then we run into a situation where if we cut it too short, especially with, the, with a longer side part, the hair might not be left long enough to comb straight back. So I'm going to pull the hair straight up. I'm going to use the recession right here as my guide. So I'm going to pull it straight back to there and I'm going to make a center cut. And I want to leave the front and the top a little bit longer because that's what's going to make this, the shape of the haircut stand out. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I want to make sure that I don't cut too close as I work towards the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm, from the back, I'm going to comb and push it forward and over direct it away from the cowlick. Okay, now I've created my center guide and I'm going to take one to two sections on each side until I run out of hair. All the while, I want to make sure that I'm keeping that comb parallel to the floor. I find my center guide. You can see it right there. So now once we get to the side section, we're going to be working with two guides. We're going to be working with a center guide and we're going to be working with an underneath guide that you can see there. So you always want to follow your guides. And it's a good idea not to cut past your center knuckle because that's usually when you wind up cutting yourself. Now I'm going to comb the hair forward again and I'm going to take one more section. I'm going to keep my fingers parallel to the floor. I don't want to round it. This is not a contour shaped haircut. I don't want to round it. Then he's not going to have enough weight in the corners to comb back. So I'm going to, again, over direct it back to where the recession is. Pull my fingers up parallel to the floor. I can see my center guide and my previous guide. And that's all I'm going to cut. And if there's nothing there, then don't cut anything. Don't round your fingers. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to comb the hair forward again. 
and I'm going to take a, a section on the left center over directing back to where the recession is. I can see my center guide. I'm taking very small sections and I'm using a traveling guide. The smaller the, the sections you take, the more accurate your work is going to be. And then never lose sight of the calic in the back. Don't get anywhere near it. And a good thing to keep in mind is that it's only a calic if you cut it too short. So as long as you don't cut it too short, it's not going to stick up. Okay, so we're going to take one more section on the side and make sure there's no hair there to cut. Just a few little pieces. Okay, so we're going to comb it back. We're going to comb it back in the direction that he's going to comb it and make sure that the hair's combing nicely and we're looking for any imperfections or any cut marks. And now for the last step, we can take a look at the bangs. And what, how I like to cut the bangs is I like to come across. So what I'm going to do is where the recession is, just, just as I over-directed it back this way, now we're going to over-direct it towards the center because we have to leave that weight in the corner to keep everything covered up. So I'm going to use my front length as my guide and that point there is our weight line. We're going to take very small sections and we're going to cut across with a slight down angle with our fingers. Now what this is going to do, this is going to layer the bangs in so it's not all one length and, and falling forward and laying down on his forehead. And the last step is when we'll go in and we'll see if this bang length is too, is too long. So now at the very end, instead of it being really thick and all just hanging there, we're just going to clean up those little pieces above his eyebrows. So by layering it in like that, it's much easier to see exactly where to cut it. So now as we comb it back, the recession is covered up and it falls in nicely. So that completes the top section, and now we're going to move on to the round of the head section. As we begin to work in the crown or the calic area, as I had mentioned before, the crown, as you brush it here, you can see where it wants to start popping out here. So I want to make sure that I'm not cutting into any of these pieces. So for the round of the head section, it goes from the, the top of my comb to my scissors. So that's the only section we're going to focus on. And the reason why I call it the round of the head section is basically it's simple. Where, where you have the round of the head, we're going to pull the hair out parallel to that, and that's what we're going to cut. So I have somewhat of a guide up here that I'm going to use. Okay, and I like to start in the center and work to the right and work to the left. So I can see my top guide. I'm going to slightly angle my, my fingers at the bottom in a little bit to create a little bit of graduation. I, got, I always have sight of my top guide. And I have my previous guide underneath there that I'm following. So I have two guides. Holding my fingers parallel to the side of the head. And this is what's creating that uh, square shape, leaving the weight in the corners. Now I'm just going to follow that all the way to the front. Again, I like to use a traveling guide. That way I always have the previous guide in my finger so I never get lost. So I'm following my guide from the top and I'm following my guide from underneath. And we're going to work towards the front. Now as I get towards the temple area, just as on top, how we over-directed to protect just that small area of recession, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to over-direct it back. And it blends in that way. Because if we go too far forward right here and cut that piece, we're going to wind up cutting a hole right in there, which we don't want to do. OK, so we did one side. So the next thing I want to do is now I'm going to find that center guide. OK, there's my top guide. And I'm going to work in the opposite direction, taking very small sections following my traveling guide, not cutting past my center knuckle. Okay, then we're just going to 
find our guide and follow it all the way to the front temple area. So, so many of the haircuts you're going to do are based on this square shaped haircut, this classic side part haircut. The only difference is it may be a little bit shorter, you may use some clipper work. But this is the foundation for a lot of what you're going to do for men's haircutting. Okay, and same thing on this side as we work our way towards the front. We want to make sure that we, where it's a little shorter in the front, that we don't cut that too short. So I'm going to over direct that temple area back to the front of the ear and that's going to blend it all in and we're going to leave it just like that. Okay, so now we're going to come back to the center and I'm going to work on the sides and back section, which is the next section down, which is from about here to here. And the hair is still long enough where we're in that transition area where we could either pick it up with our fingers or we can cut it scissor over comb. For this particular haircut, I'm going to pick it up with my fingers. So we have our guide from the round of the head section and now we're going to cut the sides and back section. We're going to angle our fingers in slightly toward the hairline. Again, because we want to create uh, some graduation. When I say graduation, I mean we want to create a, a, a shorter to longer hairstyle. And make sure you take very small sections. I can't stress that enough. The small sections it's what's, is what's going to give you a, a very uh, smooth and blended haircut. So, again, you can see the benefits of the traveling guide. You can see your top guide, and then you can see your guide underneath, so you're never going to get lost on a haircut. And that goes the same if you're picking it up with your fingers and doing a scissor over finger or clipper over finger technique. So now we're getting close to the front again and we don't want to cut it too short in the temple area. So we're going to over direct it back. Okay, and then comb through it and make sure it's nice and even. So now we come back to the center. We find our guide again. And then we do the same thing working our way to the left hand side. So it's fairly simple. If you follow your guides and work for them the top down, it's a much easier way to, to give a, a nice blended men's haircut. So focus on taking small sections and make sure you can see your traveling guide. Okay, so that completes the majority of the haircut. Now we're going to work on the, the semi-finish area using a scissor over comb technique. For the next step, we're going to take a large scissor comb and a large scissor, and we're going to work on this two finger width area around the outline of the haircut. It's going to take two steps. We're going to start out with the large scissor and a large comb using the scissor over comb technique, and then we're going to switch to a finishing comb and an adjustable clipper to, to um, to finalize the semi-finished section. So to start out, comb the hair back, and as you comb the hair back, you can see what we're going to blend to, right about in through there, where we left off on the sides and back section. So this is the angle we want. We want a slight angle. We don't want to cut in too deep. So what I like to do is I like to angle the, the comb in a little bit towards the head, and it picks up the hair, making it easy to cut. And what I'm doing is I'm taking an imaginary cutting plane and I'm following it until I run out of hair. If I just go and make a couple cuts and stop, that's when we're going to wind up with weight lines, which we don't want. Okay, and every time you make a few cuts, comb it back. Again, this is a longer haircut, so we don't want to cut it in too close or too deep in the semi-finish area.
A good idea to remember on these type of haircuts is if this client typically is your suit and tie customer that comes in every three to four weeks. So they should never look like uh, they need a haircut and never look like they just had a haircut. Now this is the same holds true for your scissor and comb technique. You're taking very small sections by moving the comb slow and you're utilizing a traveling guide. You're see, underneath you can, see your, you can see your previous guide here and you can see your traveling guide underneath. So whether you're picking it up with your fingers or you're picking it up with the comb, the concept is the same. Okay, and we're just gonna follow that all the way around to the left side. And a good idea with dark color hair to use a gray, a tan, or a white comb, a light colored comb, so you can see, so the hair shows up a lot better. It'd be very difficult if you were using a black comb to see the hair that you're cutting. And I don't concern myself with the outline of the haircut until I'm done, because as we're going through and removing the weight of the hair, you can start to see the hairline straightening out and it's starting to, um, to taper out that tail. Whereas if you try it, the first thing you do is to take that clipper and line it off, it's, um, the haircut is going to look uh, unfinished. It's going to be too, too sharp of a line. We want to leave a nice natural outline for these haircuts. Okay, then we just continue to uh, work our way around the head by moving the chair. You can save yourself a lot of fatigue during the day if you just keep spinning your chair instead of moving your feet around the chair all day long. Now with these fuller looks around the ear, a lot of people have difficulty cutting hair around the ear with the comb. The easiest way is to comb through like this and then grab the hair especially with a fuller look. If this was a shorter haircut and you were doing a closer taper around the edges, you would hold the ear down with the comb. But since we want to leave it a little bit fuller, we're going to keep the comb over the ear, protect the ear with the comb. And what that does is it's going to leave that hair a little bit longer around the edges, a little fuller. Especially when you're dealing with very straight hair. If you go too short, it's going to stick straight out. Now as you get towards the front, just as we over-directed the hair back when we picked it up and cut it, I'm holding the comb at an angle where the front part of the comb is angled away from the temple area. I'm not rounding it in because that's going to cut the hair too short in the front. We want to make sure that the hair is even all the way through and longer towards the front. Okay, so that completes the first part of the semi-finish with our scissor over comb technique. Now we're going to move on to clipper over comb. For the next step in the semi-finish, we're going to focus on the one finger width around the outline of the haircut. We're going to use a clipper over comb technique with a light colored finishing comb. So when I say a finishing comb, I mean a smaller comb because we're working with less hair. It's light colored so it shows up so the hair shows up in the comb, and we're going to use an adjustable clipper. Uh, adjustable clipper is a, a clipper that has a lever on the side that lengthens and shortens the blade. Uh, the longer the blade, the softer, more blended cut you get. The closer or shorter the blade is, the more clipper marks you might wind up with. So, so this is good for kind of lining it off and coming around the ears a little bit before you go in with your trimmer. But my clipper over comb I like to do with the teeth longer and I like to use just kind of the tip of the teeth as I'm cutting it to leave that nice soft cut. So we're going to start out angling the comb at a 45 degree angle and we're going to slightly follow it through and I'm not going past that one finger width around the outline of the haircut. Now after I do that I'm going to pull the ear down, I'm going to close the clipper blade down and I'm just going to grab a few of those longer hairs. And just, just as we did with the scissor and comb, I'm not holding the ear down with the comb and tapering it too close behind the ear. I'm holding the comb over the ear so it still stays full but off the ear. Now if you're right-handed, as I am, I find the easiest way instead of 
lifting up and being at an awkward angle, I find it easier to come at this angle. Just come through with your comb at a 45 degree angle like this. So it doesn't throw off your posture and make you uncomfortable. And you can hold the ear down, hold that clipper blade at a 45 degree angle and grab a few of those long ones. Okay, then as we work our way around the back towards the bottom, don't be afraid to bend the head down. I put the comb on the hairline and then I just bevel the comb. Okay, and if you have a little heavier area like we do right here, we can come across and just do a little bit of clipper over comb to lighten up that area. And just as before, we hold the base of the comb on the hairline and bevel it out. And then with an open blade on the hairline, as soon as you get to the hairline, start to scoop, to scoop away. The idea is to leave a nice natural hairline instead of leaving it all one length and then just lining it off with a, uh, a trimmer because then it looks like when the customer turns his head to the side, it looks like a... Uh, a shelf from the from the side. So whenever you see heaviness, you can over direct the hair a little bit and just do a little clipper over comb. So now you can see the tail is gone. Okay, with the blade open, very carefully start scooping the blade away at the hairline. Now we're going to close the blade halfway. And we're going to go just below the hairline and stop. Now we're going to close the blade all the way and do the same thing. Okay, now we're going to finish this through the left hand side. So just a 45 degree angle around the outline. Now we can hold the ear down and grab those few long pieces. We'll keep working our way towards the front. I'm going to close the clipper blade down and just go in front of the ear a little bit. Okay, and that completes the semi finish. And then we'll be moving on to the next step is to complete the outline of the haircut. For this next step, we're going to use our trimmer to complete the outline of the haircut. Now for the trimmer, all that should be done with a trimmer is to edge off the sideburns and clean up any long hair around the outline and on the neck. We should not be doing any clipper over comb with the trimmer. You can see how close the blades are. It's going to cause, it's, this clipper was not made for clipper over comb and it's going to cause a lot of uh, clipper marks or razor marks or little lines in the haircut. So as you can see, we already have it tapered out. Everything is blending in smoothly. So the only thing we're going to do is we're going to make our line on the sideburn and shave up to it. Now our model here has his chin perfectly parallel to the floor. Make sure when you're going to line off the sideburns that the, the client's head is perfectly parallel to the floor. Otherwise you're going to wind up with the sideburns either angled up or angled down. So now we're going to pull the ear down and you can see those few little hairs there. We just want to clean that off the back of the ear. Especially if you're using a sharper trimmer like this particular trimmer. What I like to do is I like to use the back corner 
instead of taking the trimmer and pressing down and taking a chance and um, scraping the, the client's uh, ear, the skin is very soft behind the ear, so you want to be very gentle and make sure that we don't cause any um, irritation. Now on the outline of the haircut, you want to be, you want to stay right on the natural hairline. So I'm just going to shave in just a little bit to the natural hairline. Now on the bottom, we've already created a nice natural hairline, so we'll blend the client's head down. And we're just going to shave up to what we've already created. If you see a few long pieces there, you can go in and just clean that up just a touch. And always shave up, never take the clipper and drag down. If you take the clipper and drag down, the cutting, the cutting blade is so close to the uh, top stationary blade that the cutting blade can go directly to the skin and uh, cause irritation. So always shave in an upward direction. Now as we work our way around to the opposite side, we want to stay on that diagonal. We're going to pull the ear down and just grab a few of those long ones. With guys haircuts, this is the first part of the haircut that that we notice that gets uh, really uh, irritating is when the hair starts touching the ear. So you have to find the balance between getting the hair off the ear but not getting it too, uh, too high of an arc around the ear. And then on the opposite side, we're just going to line off the sideburn, same length as the other side. And that completes the outline of the haircut. For the last step of the haircut before we, we style it, I want to go through and I want to texturize the hair. The thickest part of the hair is right through the round of the head area here. The occipital bone and uh, the parietal area is very thick. So what I want to go through is I want to go through the 44 tooth uh, thinning shear and I'm going to show you a real easy way to take some of that weight out without without thinning the hair out too much. So we're going to start in the center section with a scissor over comb technique and I'm going to close the, the, the scissor halfway and I'm going to move the comb very slow. If I close the scissor all the way it takes too much thickness out, too much weight out so I'm just closing it halfway, moving the comb really slow so that way it's taking a lot of that thickness out. and I'm going about a third of the way down on the shaft of the hair. So if I was to pick this up and cut it to give you an idea, this is where I'm picking it up. So I'm over directing it to here and I'm picking it up to about here to where I could see that top guide and letting all the hair at the top fall out. Okay, we're going to spin the chair and work our way towards the front and the same principle applies. We don't want to get too close to the temple area. Most of the thickness is from the front of the ear through the back all the way to the other side on the front of the ear. So I'm going to come back around to the back. and We're going to do the same thing. And you can see how that hair is moving a little easier now. Keep rotating the chair. And again, it's very important to leave enough weight so these calyx don't start to stick out. So we're finding a balance between taking enough of the thickness or enough of the bulk out so the haircut will last three to four weeks, but for the haircut not to be too short when the customer walks out of the barbershop. Okay, 
there. We're going to follow all the way around to the front. And same thing as I get to the temple area, I'm going to angle the comb away so that the hair in the temple area never gets into the comb. All right, and that completes the haircut, and now we're ready to style. Okay, for the last step of the haircut, we're gonna we're gonna style his hair. So what I want to do is I'm gonna go with more of a wet look, so we can we can uh, comb through the hair, get more of a distinct part. So what I want to do is I want to wet the hair down. It's dried out considerably, as you can see, since we've done the haircut. So we're gonna wet it down pretty good, and then we're gonna put a good amount of a, a firm hold gel in, and then I'm gonna style it with that. So we'll go ahead and go through and dampen the hair. And when you dampen the hair, it's always a good idea to have a towel close by and uh, keep your hand over the customer's eyes and face when you're wetting their hair down. Okay, so we're going to comb that through, and then we're going to put the then we're going to put the gel in. Okay, so we're going to get a good amount of gel. Don't be stingy with it, and get it right down to the roots. Now, especially on the sides, with hair like this that wants to stick out, you want to get it right down to the roots. And then we're going to grab our a comb with a comb with wide teeth. And we're going to go through and find that part. You know, and part it along his natural part. We're going to push the front up just a little bit. And then we're going to comb the back towards the center and then we'll let that, uh, we'll let that firm hold gel do its thing and harden up. Okay, so we'll give you a 360 view now on a longer version of the classic side part.